since the primary, I think the Lamont campaign has expanded way beyond the war to all the other issues that we here in Hamden care about, that we here in Connecticut care about, and it's Ned who has shown us what we can and should expect from our next U.S. Senator. So with all that, I would, I would uh, ask you to welcome our next junior Senator from Connecticut, Ned Lamont. Brendan and Peter and Craig and all of you, look, nobody owes me any debt of gratitude. It's just that uh, George Bush is driving this country into a ditch, and Joe Lieberman's got one hand on the steering wheel saying, stay the course. And as far as I can figure out, there are people all over the state of Connecticut who are standing up and saying they want to change, and I'm one of you. I'm going to go down to Washington, D.C. and do everything I can to change the course of this country, change what we're doing in Iraq, and change the course of what we're doing here in the United States. You know, one of the things that got me in this race is the fact that we have 47 million people without health insurance. And as a small business guy, I can tell you that my health insurance costs have doubled in the last six years. They have doubled. It's bankrupting working families. It's bankrupting small businesses. And if we don't deal with it, it's going to bankrupt the United States of America. And we had a little debate the other day, and I said, look, my Republican friends say, uh, we can't have universal coverage because first we have to make the system more efficient, a more efficient delivery system. And my de Democratic friends, and I'm one of them, we say universal health care, universal coverage, that should be a basic right for all Americans. And let's face it, you're never going to have a more efficient delivery system until everybody is covered. And that's what they didn't understand at that debate. They said, we can't afford to cover all those people without health insurance. No. You can't afford not to. It used to be that 70% uh, of us were insured through our company. Now it's closer to 60%. That's why you have the uninsured. And every time there's somebody uninsured, they end up waiting till they're too sick. They end up going into the emergency room. They end up going to a hospital bed. It's the most expensive type of medicine there is. It's so wrong. It's so unfair. And it ends up being built into the premiums of everybody else out there who's paying for health care in this country and paying for health insurance. And it just seemed to me that politicians in Washington, D.C. don't get it. For 18 years, the situation has been getting worse and worse and worse, and they're not dealing with it. So we put forward a plan. We put forward a plan that would reduce the cost of health insurance for small businesses. And we told business, you ought to provide a basic level of health insurance for all your people. That way, we're going to get to universal coverage as a basic right for all Americans. One of the things I hate about this war, I mean, it's cost us, you know, tens of thousands of dead and wounded. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have died. That's the latest estimate right now. It's costing us $250 million a day. It's making us less safe. I know George Bush and Joe Lieberman keep telling us uh, we're safer but not yet safe. Not true. I mean, it's our own intelligence agencies. You probably heard just, uh, you know, last month they stood up and they said this war is making us less safe. It's fueling a new generation of jihadists. It's stretched our military thin. We don't have enough troops to finish the mission over in Afghanistan. And all at the same time, we're not taking care of homeland security right here in the United States of America. The bipartisan... Well said. <laughs> You know, the Bipartisan Commission, they give us D's and F's. They say, my God, the biggest piece of vulnerability in the United States of America right now is not some missile coming in from North Korea. No, it's Kim Jong-il taking that nuclear weapon that he's tested, uh, feeling frisky, selling that to a nuclear terrorist, puts it in a container. That container is part of a cargo ship that lands in Newport, or New, lands in New Haven Harbor, and we've never screened it. We've never tested it anywhere along the way. And I just think it's unconscionable that five years after 9-11, we still don't have that basic level of security. And don't tell me it's a question of dollars and cents. For a couple billion dollars, we can screen all the cargo coming in from all the ports around the world, coming into uh, our harbors or major areas of vulnerability. A couple billion dollars. That's a week in the war in Iraq. So it just gives you an idea of where our priorities are when it comes to um, keeping America safe. Uh, I happen to also be one of those veterans of WW2. And as one who volunteered and joined the, the Navy when I was 17, 
I want to tell you that I don't have much respect for that uh, graduate of the Champagne Battalion in uh, Texas. Also, I want to say this, that uh, once I got out and got back from the China Seas, uh, very happily uh, alive and well, <coughs> that uh, the GI Bill help, helped me get through college and then law school. So, thanks. I look forward to uh, voting for you and working for you. And my uncle was exact same age, serving in the China Seas, and did not come back. Um, I'll, I'll just say one observation I thought was important. I, I just wish this government had listened to its military during the run-up to this war. It listened to the veterans. It listened to the generals. Had listened to Brent Scowcroft. You know, remember, you remember who Brent Scowcroft was? He was a head of NSC. He was the top security advisor to George Bush Sr., George Bush the Elder, sometimes called George Bush the Wiser. And, uh, you know, this, and George Bush Sr. said, please, Brent, go talk to my son before we rush off to war. You remember General Shinseki? It was General Shinseki that said, okay, if you're going to invade Iraq, make darn sure you have the necessary troops so you can secure it afterwards. You're going to need hundreds of thousands of troops. You're going in too ill-equipped. And they dismissed General Shinseki, and they pushed him into early retirement. We did not listen to the military then. We're not listening to the military now. Increasingly, it's the military that are standing up. It's the top general from Britain who said just uh, last week, we're exacerbating the insurgency. The British troops are coming home within a year, and that's going to put pressure on um, the Maliki government to make the necessary political compromises that are our best hope for Iraq. I'm, I'm a junior at Hannon High School, and I've been looking at colleges, and I've been noticing how expensive it is, of course, as you said you know. Um, and I've, I've noticed that, that the, uh, the, the loans that are available that are not need-based, the uh, interest rates have recently gone up. And on your website, I read that you support increasing um, the Pell loans. Yeah. But I was wondering what are your plans, or what ideas you have to make college more affordable to middle-class families? Pell grants are grants that are awarded to a whole variety of families, you know, working middle class, you name it. And these are grants. And we haven't had an increase in what that, the value of those in over nine years. And this is a country that wants more of our kids to have access to higher education. The baby boomers are starting to retire and there's no increase. So what we need to do is it's in America's interest. It's the right thing to do. It's also in our interest to have more rungs on the ladder and have more ways that uh, kids can get forward to uh, education. UConn, I, you know, I teach this class at Harding High School. UConn is the most expensive option for these kids they can think of. It's not, what they, um, it's not an alternative on the table. It's become so expensive. So grants, loans, bringing down the cost of higher education, these have got to be priorities for our country. This is America. We can do whatever we put our minds to. Right now, we're not even trying. Hey, God bless you all. Thanks.